This is Racing Across America with Seth Merrow. Welcome back to Racing Across America. As noted earlier, happy to be joined by Steve Bick, a rare weekday appearance as a little holiday break from the radio show. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Uh, and we uh, were talking a little bit off the air. You had a little holiday road trip. How'd that go? Oh, we've done good. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing, instead of going on each and one long thing, we've been hitting a uh, little, you know, two days and overnight, and we'll probably do another one this week. Nice, nice, nice. You and, and uh, Tina, a little time off, a little time from the radio show, a little time for her from school, so I'm uh, making the most of that. But still, have to pay attention to uh, the racing. And let me, let, before we act, uh, actually get into some specific races, just a little uh, overview topic here. They reported on uh, Friday, opening day at Santa Anita, 40,000. Now, there was a calendar giveaway, so I guess there were some spinners, but still, they had a pretty no, significant... There's no, there's no, no, no spinners. There, that's no spinning. That's, uh, that's one, through the, one through the turnstile at a time. And, you know, previous year, 30,000 uh, last year. Santa Anita's opening step has been spectacular. There's no other, there's no other way to describe it. The, the handle, they've done the same number of handles in three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that they did last year in four days. And, and I was going to tie that into, th this is really kind of putting an exclamation point on, I think we were all worried, uh, you know, Hollywood Park going out of business, and really you look out at California over the past five years or so, we were all kind of a little bit worried about where California racing was going. But, boy, the past six months, I think that thought has completely turned around. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually been a theme most of December as we were moving uh, over from the Del Mar meet uh, into Los Al for those three weekends. And then with Santa Anita opening on Friday, that had been a real regular theme. I had conversations with Jay Pridman, with Jay Humpty, uh, with Brad McKenzie from Los Al, and, of course, Rick Hammerley, who's with me every week. Uh, the racing director of Santa Anita, and a year that started with all kinds of trepidation and, and uncertainty ended up picking up momentum as the year went by. And whether it was Lozal with their three small, you know, intermezzo meet, uh, whether it was Del Mar with this added uh, November session, which was a bigger success than anyone could have thought, things have been so much better than than originally expected. They they have to be just delighted, and uh, it's a benefit for the whole game. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to see them make that nice turnaround. And again, it was a little dicey with Hollywood going out, but I think things have filled in nicely, LaSalle and uh, Del Mar as well. All right, let's go back to opening day at Santa Anita. A couple of grade one events. want to get your thoughts on these. The Malibu uh, on Friday, grade one, $300,000, seven furlongs. Of course, all eyes on shared belief. Who, uh, the only blemish on the record, the Breeders' Cup Classic, but this was the comeback event, and Shared Belief will be the number eight horse here. Just getting it done, has to struggle over the number one Conquest two-step, 72 to one, but continues what has been a really good couple of three months for uh, Mark Cassie. Conquest two-step really gives uh, Shared Belief all he can handle. Again, it's 72 to one, and she too, a horse I thought was gonna be very interesting, runs third in here with Indianapolis fourth. But what were your thoughts on the Malibu? Well, the the race has been looked at kind of with sideways glances. I think people are a little confused as to what we saw here and how to interpret the performance. And for starters, people should appreciate that shared belief was cutting back from a mile and a quarter yeah. to seven furlongs. And while we all, as handicappers and players, we love turnbacks, most turnbacks are from a mile, a mile and a sixteenth, maybe a mile and an eighth, turning back them to maybe seven furlongs. And that can be very potent. This is a horse who has been running in full-fledged routes. He had run in the Pacific Classic, and the, the, uh, the former Goodwood, the Awesome Again, and the classic, so two mile and a quarter races and a mile and an eighth race. Cutting back to seven furlongs, no matter how uh, talented a horse you are, how much speed you have, it, it is a whole different ball game. 
And very wisely, Mike Smith, who it's amazing that at his age, and the way it's advancing, that Smith continues to be at the top of his game. Smith had to keep shared belief within closer striking distance. And for the people who say, oh, well, that's his running style anyway. Yeah, that's his running style going a mile and a quarter or a mile and an eighth. And yes, the first quarter of this Malibu was slower than you would expect with these type of horses, but they kept going faster. As opposed to the La Brea, which was fast early and slow late, this was slow early and fast late. So it's a little bit of an optical illusion in terms of shared belief having to, quote-unquote, work at it. He, he did kind of grind away, and he basically outclassed uh, not just the Conquest, uh, but also uh, Pimpernel and, and uh, Chitu. And, and he did this on, on absolute raw class. I mean, watch the replay a few times, and you can see he's never really fully extended. He's never in what would be the mode of a horse, you know, coming down the stretch in a route race. And so the return for one turn for him, I think, put him in a position that was a little bit daunting. And he's not getting enough credit for the performance. You know, there's people saying, oh, if he was as good as they thought, he would have won by the length of the stretch. Stop with that stupidity. I mean, each individual performance has got to be appreciated for the set of circumstances. And he wins, and he won here. And he's got one loss in his career that uh, is basically, you know, a, a, a no low contendere, guilty with explanation. So I, I, I thought it was, I'm not a big fan of his either. And I thought it was a very efficient professional performance. And uh, when we see him in the San Antonio in February, you know, back to a full fledged route, uh, he'll be that much better. Yeah, and he was carrying 123, the rest of the field 118. Nice That's performance. Right. And as I say, 72 to 1 for Conquest Two Step. Mark Cassie, Mark Cassie, always high percentage, but really the past two or three months, he has just been on fire. Yeah, Cassie's horses are running well. Uh, and, and he's gotten off to a nice start at the meet, uh, as has Jerry Hollendorfer. Obviously, Hollendorfer sweeps the two grade ones. And in La Brea, you know, there you had a turn back. See, that was really the, the, the absolute textbook definition. If you want to watch the La Brea, watch Sam's sister, the brother Derek. And let's, uh, let, let, let's pull up that video right now. Yeah. We will watch the stretch run. It will be number nine, Sam's sister. As you say, Cherry Hollendorfer again, a big opening day for him. Taurus, the 70 cent to a dollar favorite, will run second in here, the number one horse, and comes out of this race with a little bit of a ding. And then uh, Ken Ramsey's uh, uh, Thank You, Mary Lou, will run third, the number three horse. I was looking forward to see what Stone Tastic would do, if this horse could get back to that crazy uh, performance we saw in the prior rest. Unfortunately, no. Stone Tastic at 8 to 1, a disappointing seventh in here, but a nice performance from Sam's sister. Yeah, and, and, and again, I, we explained the way, you know, this race, they went very fast early. The horse who uh, comes away, you know, as the heroine here is actually Paris. I mean, she could not have run better in her first start for the new connections after being sold, and it, it's really too bad. I mean, she did everything but win and ran her, her absolute guts out. Uh, get caught late by a horse turning back and a horse that was closing into a collapsing pace and so i mean that's your textbook seven furlong scenario uh the race didn't you know the, both of these races didn't score out very high in terms of figures speed figures uh but that's circumstantial because of you know the paces were unusual in both of these spots uh this was uh, obviously a great start for hollendorfer for the meet and you know to, to add back to the shared belief performance it's really Clearly, with the Eclipse voting set uh, coming down to the wire next week, uh, I haven't put in my ballot. I, I'm sure you haven't either. Uh, it, it's a very, it's a very interesting result. You end up with three three-year-olds at the end of the year. Shared belief, Bayern, and California Chrome. Uh, I don't know how you separate the three. It is, it, it is almost impossible. Uh, and it's really going to be unfair that, that only one of them can be three-year-old of the year and only one of them is going to be horse of the year. It, it's a, you know, that, that is it. It's not main sequence. So 
this was a really fitting finish, I guess, to a, a tremendous three-year-old year. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm going to be interested to see how shared belief uh, shakes out in that, though. I think, the, unfortunately, I think the Malibu and the La Brea are on the calendar in a position where I think a lot of Eclipse voters, it just goes totally under the radar for them. And so I don't know. Well, then, then, they should, then they should turn in their ballots and give it up. Because if they're not going to wait and see how, I mean, you got two grade ones. You had uh, grade ones for two-year-olds with Dortmund, uh, you know, going back to uh, last week at Ed Lozelle. I mean, if you're not, and thanks to Brandy, if you're not going to wait and see how the last grade ones of the year turn out, then don't, then you shouldn't be voting. Yeah, I, I agree completely, but it just seems like these uh, come on the calendar in such a position. The, the, the ballots uh, appeared in people's mailboxes last week. I would hope nobody did it, but I would bet some people already mailed them in. And, uh, again, I agree with you. I think that's unfortunate. But All right. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people, Seth, mailing it in. There's no doubt about it. All right, let's shift our attention now uh, back to the East Coast, and we'll go to Saturday, take a look. They had some nice stakes at Gulfstream, and we're going to take a look at this sprint, which I think might have some implications for 2015. The Mr. Prospector, grade three event for three-year-olds and up, $100,000 going six furlongs. Talked a little bit about this race last week, and I thought Speechify coming out of the Kenny No was certainly one to look at. And Speechify will get it done as the nine to five favorite. Speechify is the number six. Number one, Risk Factor will run second. Number four, Mongolian Saturday runs third in here. But Speechify is a four year old who coming into this had only four lifetime starts, fired a lifetime best buyer figure last time over Calder Gulfstream Park West in the Kenny No. Now strings a couple of nice sprint stakes together. And as I say, this may have some implications for 2015. This horse may be a little bit of a player in that sprint division. So this is a horse that's getting better uh, very steadily under the uh, very adept hand of Ralph Nick. And, and I think that this was a significant win, you know, not, not, because, not because he beat uh, such a, you know, an august uh, cast of, of horses, but I think it's important to, from a, uh, the standpoint of team valor and the fact that, of course, you know, they spread horses back around to a number of trainers beside Rick McTee, who took over uh, when Graham Motion uh, moved on uh, from Barry Irwin and from Team Valor. And I think Ralph Nick, it's pretty evident that he's going to take real advantage of getting horses from Team Valor. And I, I thought that this was an important performance from that standpoint. And I would keep a very careful eye on Ralph Nick. Nick is also showing, you know, with a very good start at this meet at Gulfstream, the advantage of him having established a base down in South Florida for year-round. Nix was one of the trainers who took up Tim Ritbo's offer to, uh, you know, to stay in, at Gulfstream and and to have a string uh, year round. So uh, I think that's paying off actually uh, pretty handsomely. This is a horse that's only been campaigned uh, at Gulfstream and at Gulfstream West. So uh, Ralph Nix, uh, very capable, of course, uh, started as an assistant years ago to Bill Mott and does a terrific job, particularly with young horses. But here he's showing he can do it with older horses as well. All right, let's move on and, uh, again, uh, race potentially with some implications for 2015. We'll go cross-state to Pasco on Saturday at Tampa. Two-year-olds, $100,000, seven furlongs. We'll watch uh, the number four, Catalina Red, get it done as the three-to-five favorite. Just get it done over XY Jet. Charlie's brother runs third in here. It is a uh, track record performance, 121.40. And I want to get your thoughts on Catalina Red because uh, came over to uh, Tampa last time, won the inaugural, won off by seven lengths that day. That was this horse's maiden breaker in the fourth career start. So now two wins and two stakes at Tampa. But again, Tampa's kind of a quirky track. Do you think this horse is going to move that uh, talent? Has this horse turned the corner and will he be able to win elsewhere also? Yeah, I think he will. And uh, Chad Stewart, you know, is a very capable horse who's uh, operated under the radar. You know, he's a guy that, uh, with his wife, has a training center in Ocala. Uh, they're very well known for uh, starting young horses on their careers, and Stewart will also train horses on himself. And uh, a guy that is exceedingly capable, and, and even though he's been around for a, an extended period, seems to be, you know, something of an unknown. Uh, when, when this horse won notably uh, last time, I wanted to get him on the radio because it was obvious that this is a you know a horse with some upside, and 
they've already turned down a sizable offer for this horse uh, in the probably in the in the four or five hundred thousand dollar range. And uh, Stewart, you know, said that from the minute they you know started this horse as a young you know as a youngster, there was there was real expectation that you know that he had talent. So I, I think there's a lot of upside. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much stock in the you know the the good but not spectacular figures he's posting. Got an 88 buyer. Uh, you know he set back to back track record. And um, you know I, I think uh, I think he's a, a horse that you know should continue to improve. And if you watch him run, he's a horse that looks like he'll stretch out easily. Every time you watch him gallop out, it, it's apparent that. You know, he's a horse that can go further. So I, I think Catalina Red, very much one of those, you know, B-level, triple crown season you know, types that, you know, you're going to probably see in the Sam F. Davis, and, uh, you know, then Stewart will make his decisions from there. All right, let's look at the two-year-olds out on the West Coast on the grass. Again, implications for going forward to 2015 in a three-year-old season as far as turf runners. We're looking at this, the uh, Eddie Logan now at Santa Anita. And it, it will be the number 11 Bolo under Mike Smith is the 9-5 to five favorite. Getting it done here over number 9, Soul Driver. Number 3, Daddy DT uh, runs third. Bolo came in with two races under his belt. Had broken the maiden prior to this uh, at Del Mar. So now a uh, couple of race win streak. And boy, does it pretty impressively uh, this past weekend. Bolo gets it done. Well, this is a horse by Temple City, the son of Dinah Former that Carla Gaines herself trained. And uh, this is a Spendthrift homebred. It is a, uh, uh, was bred by uh, Spendthrift. It's, it's not a homebred because it's a different ownership group. But uh, Carla Gaines has expected big things from this horse from day one. And this was a spot, I mean, just the fact that this horse went off favored uh, at under two to one told you all you needed to know. There was a big buzz going in. Uh, if you didn't look at things like Andy Harrington's National Turf Workout Report, uh, it, it was obvious that this horse uh, had uh, a lot of eyes on him. And he uh, not only he not only came through, he, he, he looked tremendous. Uh, he's going to absolutely get a chance on the dirt, probably in the Robert uh, Lewis, uh, in the Bob Lewis uh, coming up in early February. Uh, there's no reason not to try him at least uh, once on the dirt. He's out of the cheap Seattle mare. Uh, there's no telling uh, what you know what there is an upside for Bolo, but this is a serious horse. Yeah, he, he'll be one to watch as the three-year-old uh, on the turf, certainly. And uh, before we uh, let you go, talk about a few more races here from the past weekend. Don't have video, but did want to talk about, you mentioned when we were off the air, uh, going back to Friday, fourth race, maiden special out at Santa Anita. Mixed Miracle gets it done in the first career start. That may be a horse to watch looking going forward. Well, and here again, you know, for those of you that uh, either listen to John White when he's on with me on, on the radio or uh, watch him from the paddock at Santa Anita, John takes his job very seriously, and he gave a real indication. You know, here was a group of uh, maidens going uh, six and a half furlongs. There were horses from Stafford in here, uh, two of them. There were uh, horses from Hollendorfer and, and uh, so forth. Uh, there was uh, a double deal with a third-time starter that looked like it had some talent. Uh, I mentioned the Hollendorfers. And John White made mixed miracles the 4-1 to one third choice. And when you saw that, you had to know that this was a horse that had some buzz around him at Santa Anita. And then you look at the workout report. He had worked very impressively. And sure enough, I mean, not only not only did he get set like he couldn't lose, he ran like it. I mean, he was absolutely terrific. Now, I don't know if this horse is going to stretch out as much. He's by Wildcat Air. Uh, he's out of a QP mare. Uh, it's a homebred by John Leviathan. I don't know if this horse is, is a two-turn type, but this was a super impressive performance. If you haven't seen it, go to calracing.com and pull up uh, the fourth race from opening day at Santa Anita. Mixed miracle. Uh, this was a nice one under Joe Talamo, one off by half a dozen widening lengths. A uh, horse to watch. And I'll toss in the trainer, I think, is a guy that if you already haven't tabbed into him, Phil D'Amato is one to watch out there. The past couple of months, he certainly made it a little noise. And if I'm not mistaken, well, I, think, I think he used to work for Mike Mitchell. 
Well, of course. He's yeah. a long, long-term Mike Mitchell assistant. And, and as Mike Mitchell got sick and uh, had the, the, uh, the brain tumor and, and uh, as his health uh, battle kind of, kind of uh, kept him away from the racetrack in, in long stretches, it, Phil D'Amato basically has been running that, that barn for maybe five years, basically. Uh, who gave Phil D'Amato his start uh, as, uh, uh, as a, a young horseman on, on the shed row? Uh, since you're asking the question, I'll, I'll give the obvious answer. Would it have been Bobby Frankel? It would be Chuck Simon. Ch oh, oh, really? Oh, that. Oh, well, that's even a better story then. Absolutely. Nice. Chuck, uh, Chuck gave uh, Phil's start. Oh, nice, nice, very good. I want to touch on a couple more races, just uh, uh, get some of your thoughts uh, out at Santa Anita. Uh, the Mathis Brothers Mile, speaking of trainers that, that maybe have interesting stories, Alert Bay wins the Mathis Brothers Mile, and I bring that up because a, uh, a month or so ago we had Tony uh, Kalo on the show before the Zia Park Derby, and Tony was handicapping finger lakes, but he tossed out, hey, Zia Park Derby, take a look at Alert Bay, because he's friends with Blaine Wright from his days up in Northern California. And Blaine Wright, this horse wins a couple of stakes up at Hastings, then goes down and for Blaine Wright wins the Zia Park Derby. And I think this, this uh, win uh, on the weekend at Santa Anita was either his first stakes win at Santa Anita or first grade two at Santa Anita. But this is kind of a fun horse for a, a trainer that maybe is otherwise a little bit under the radar. Absolutely. And Blaine Wright does a nice job and, uh, you know, is, is certainly you know, one of these guys that is not going to be as familiar to people that, uh, that don't follow the circuit. But uh, Alert Bay is a, you know, is a nice horse. Yeah. He's a city dip. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I can only go by what we've seen. I mean, he has shown himself to be versatile and, uh, well, I think there's I think there's plenty to, to like about this. I mean, uh, it beat a good field. This was not, you know, this was a deep, talented group of horses that, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I looked at that race, I, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. There were like eight or nine horses that could win. Yeah, he had long on value for uh, Bill Mott, who had won that Twilight Derby on Breeders' Cup weekend. I was kind of surprised long on value didn't come back for the, uh, the uh, Hollywood Derby. Um, that seemed like a logical spot there. Grade one and a lot of money, but uh, maybe... Maybe now that he finished seventh, we know why he didn't come back for that one. And also, just before we go, I wanted to touch on, because you brought up Mike Smith and a nice weekend for him, he wins the Midnight Loot, uh, the great $300,000 sprint uh, this weekend. Distinctive Passion gets it done. Air of Storm runs second. And notable in their secret circle at 30 cents to a dollar, disappoints running fourth. But as I say, Mike Smith, you toss in Bolo and Shared Belief, wins another nice stakes race. Big weekend for uh, Mike Smith. No doubt about it, and uh, pretty much uh, you know, that was the theme. I, I thought that uh, between Smith and uh, uh, El Elvis Trujillo and, and Joe Palomo, uh, they had uh, nice stake wins. Uh, Carla Gaines, you know, she uh, she won those two races on Saturday, uh, the Logan and uh, the Franco with Lady Pimpernel. Uh, Victor Espinosa with another uh, stake win uh, in that Bobby Franco. Uh, a, a tremendous opening at, at Santa Anita by by any measurement. I mean, it was impossible not to be closely watching everything that went on there these last three days to start the season and uh, their first full week of racing, which starts on Wednesday. It'll start with a nice carryover. Of course, we have a carryover for closing day at Aqueduct as well. Yeah, it was a really nice holiday weekend across the country, and we appreciated having you in. As I say, a rare weekday uh, appearance to... Uh, uh, recap some of the action. Uh, another holiday week uh, on the radio. You you have off, so some more travels. We wish you and Tina a happy New Year and safe travels as you pop around. You going to be in, back in with us on Sunday? Uh, I think there's a better chance than not. Okay. Well, we'll check in. We'll check in towards the end of the week and see uh, see how that stands. But again, we appreciate the visit this morning. Best of shows on uh, on the radio this week. All best of. Yep. There's some nice. Uh, there's some nice mixes of of things uh we've got i think today in fact uh, or yeah probably today and into tomorrow uh we've got uh some of the, the people that we lost over oh, nice. the course of the year the, yeah the memorial Paul, thing. yeah, nice. yeah uh, we, we had a few conversations uh about Dickie small of course and and uh, don't forget the town boss we lost yeah. boss early in the year which was just awful and uh we also of course horses the uh, cigar and and so forth so there's some of that, and uh, we do a musical show actually on uh, New Year's Day. Uh, some, you know, some mix and match of uh, some things that that people may have missed during the course of the year. Very good. Sounds good. And of course, replays here 
on the uh, Capital LTV TV network early in the morning. Steve, uh, again, appreciate the visit, taking some time off of uh, your vacation week to uh, come and recap some of the stakes action. And hopefully we'll see you on Sunday.